In this video, you will see Ray, a Marine who was blown up by two explosive devices in Iraq. He served in Iraq and Afghanistan. And you will see how he moves from being really severely debilitated by PTSD and other uh, issues. I don't like it when people take care of me. I can't stand it. Mm. So, I mean, it, yeah. you want your independence. I, exactly. Yeah. I, wa I wanted my independence back. And I didn't, you know, I didn't, I don't like the idea of being a burden to somebody. In the beginning, I had to kind of teach myself how to walk, talk, and think again. Uh, I guess every day it's been getting a little better, kind of. Now, what kind of medications are you on? Uh oh You remember? <laughs> uh, they got me on like six or seven. Do you know what they're for, supposedly? Uh, pain. In fact, Ray had been prescribed a cocktail of powerful medications, not only for pain, but for PTSD, TBI, traumatic brain injury, Tourette syndrome, and depression. The involuntary movements that you make with your head and neck like this, when did that begin? I want to say like a month and a half after, after, after. the blast. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, I'm going to try, give you an idea. Okay. And we'll see if we, where we can go with it, okay? Okay. See, the movements that you're making are the kind of movements that your body would have made if there was an explosion. And what it's doing is it's kind of repeating those movements over and over again. It's sort of like it got stuck there. And I'd like to see if we can get you some tools so you can stretch this out so that these, these reactions are a little bit softer. I want to have you very slowly, very gently, opening and closing your mouth, just the smallest amount, and then come back a little bit and then just go to where you feel a little resistance. That will trigger those movements probably, but will also give you a chance to feel what's going on before the jerks, okay? All right. So just, let's just do that together, okay? Mm -hmm. Did you feel what happened that time? It was just a, a tingling sensation in my body. Exactly. What happens? when you exposed to something like you've been exposed to, I mean, being in a war zone, and then having an explosion, it's almost like you get jolted right out of your body. And so what we're doing is calling it back into your body. Making me more, uh, kind of like more entwined with my body, making me realize what it needs and what it wants. The shock part has to be worked on first. Otherwise, if you were to work with the emotional part, you would very likely be actually just reactivating even further the shock reaction. And somatic experiencing differentiates between these two. Now, let me do something a little bit different. So, you know, sometimes the foghorn sounds like this. And the idea is to vibrate it so that it's it, it's like the sound is coming from down here in your belly. Vibrate To feel it in your stomach? Exactly, to feel it in your stomach. Okay? Let's right. do it. We'll do, we'll do it together, okay? Relaxation. It's where I can I feel like I can stretch my hands all the way out. I feel that. Feel your hands stretching slowly. Just feel the stretch. Yeah, yeah really feel the stretch. Not as tense. Not as tense. I know your arms were so so tense. But again, giving yourself that gift of pleasurable relaxation. 
when I first came, my very first session, I remember in L.A., I thought this was the dumbest thing in the world. I, I, I Honestly, I, I was so resistant to it. In the third session, I ask Ray to see if he can envision how he might be at a later time. The reason this is important is when people are highly traumatized, they really can't envision a future any different than the past. What do you begin to see in front of you? Uh, I just see a, a bright future. Let's say that bright future was a ten, is a 10. Where would you say you are right now between one when you just came back from Iraq and where that bright future is? I would say at about a, a, a four. A four? A four. Okay. Okay. Now, can you imagine that you could now be at a 4.25? Mm -hmm. Can you look ahead and see yourself at 4.25? I really can. Okay. Uh, I could see myself getting to like a six. Okay. Five and a six. Okay. Seven. What if, so feel this. I can just. Five um, and a six and a seven. I had kind of thought about it while I was in the session. You know, what if this work could really make me better? What if this was. What if I was stopping myself from getting better? And I was like, you know what? Screw this. Let's put in, let's put forth the energy needed for this to work and see where it goes. After we've worked with this initial part, with what I call the shock reaction, then we are able to access some of the deep uh, feelings of guilt and anger and sorrow that Ray uh, experienced uh, in losing and losing his dear, dear friend. I'm gonna ask you just to say these words and just to notice what happens inside of you, sensations, thoughts, pictures, or memory, whatever. Just feeling the vibration, the shaking, the trembling. I want you to say, I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm alive and I'm here. I'm alive and I'm here. I survived. I survived. Not everyone did. Not everyone did. And I'm here. And I'm here. And I'm alive. And I'm alive. And what do you notice? Mm -hmm. Rage. Rage. Sorrow. Sorrow, yeah. Agony. Yeah. So you're gonna just, Same. just sit with that together, huh? People experience rage, which really is the, the, the desire, the impulse, the instinct to strike out and to destroy anything that's, that's threatening you. At the same time, they're really frightened about that. We're frightened that we'll really hurt somebody or hurt ourselves. So when we have the impulse to strike out, we then try to to, we, we, we also contract muscles that pr go against that. So, so you have this kind of locked in situation. Here's the idea to direct the rage into this core, okay? And they're gonna keep you safe so that, you, so that your rage is contained. I'm having them, in a way, take over the holding back function so that Ray can just feel in a safe way the impulse to strike out. Really get your, let your rage come right into here. And to know together we can all handle it. And again, in a way that it's contained, that it's not going into a rage reaction, but towards what I call healthy aggression. And this Access. is important because this is important in carrying out our lives in a successful way. We have to have healthy aggression. There you go, there you go. And rest, just rest. Just rest. What are you noticing when you're feeling in your fingers, your hands? Strength. Strength. My rage doesn't really feel as strong. 
I know what it's like to feel helpless. Mm. Knowing that you can't save anybody. Yeah. Mm. I know what it's like to watch somebody die right in front of your eyes. Knowing that there's nothing that you can do. You don't want to feel anything. You just want to do whatever it takes to stay alive and to help your your comrades <coughs> stay alive. You don't want to feel. Mm -hmm. But then when you come out and everything is about feeling, all intimate relationships are about feeling. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so how to make that shift when you're, you're hyper-trained to not feel, it's a survival necessity to not feel, and now it's a survival necessity of the self to be able to feel. So, you know, you've, you've had two heroes' journey, journeys, one in the battlefield and the other one now in, in the inner battlefield. I honestly thought that time would be the only thing that would really cure my problems. But it's it's like when you really let yourself be into it, it's a completely different experience. If you've had any type of traumatic experience and you've tried medications after medications like I have and just don't work for you, I would say broaden your horizon. After that last session, Ray and I corresponded a little bit. His life was taking a positive direction. He was entering a college degree program. He also got married and had a child. Look at that, bro. Can you see that? Then in December 2012, Ray, his wife Melissa, and their son Nathaniel came to see me for a day. We discussed Ray's progress and his continuing challenges. Well, let's take a little time. We we'll do some of the maybe do some of the exercises. Just a very full breath, and you make the woo sound as though it's coming from your belly. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we can we can do it together. We can start okay. together, right? Okay. <sighs> I always remember these. I actually did this uh, um, uh, in the room last night, actually. Um, and I felt so good. Um, it actually put me, helped me go to sleep. Um, and I was like, okay, well, you know, let's give it a shot. Because I was tired of being up so late and I knew I had to come here. So let's see if we can tap more into that energy. <laughs> that vital energy, All right. okay? So again, what we're doing is working with the Vu sound and connecting the belly with the jaws. All right. With your strength and your power in your belly and in your jaws, mm -hmm. all right? Feelings, uh, thoughts. I'll say a lot of warmth now. Warmth. Warmth. And where do you feel the warmth? Uh, I, I notice it mainly uh, uh, kind of going in my chest, um, and it kind of feels like waves going out of my body. So you're really feeling waves. Man. Wonderful. Um, and it kind of not just warmth in there. It kind of feels like waves of joy. Mm. Waves of joy. Um, and I noticed it had started when I was thinking about my horse therapy. Oh, and quite oh, horse therapy. Horse therapy. Really? Um, when you're in the horse therapy, you know, you're near these non-judgmental creatures, these, these animals that, that accept you for who you are, regardless of what you've seen or done. Then you go back into society. And it's like, then it's like, 
then there's the judgment again. Mm. Then there's the people who are just not conscious, yeah. who who cut you off in traffic, thinking they're going to get where they're going faster. Mm. For me, it's been it's been it's been like a struggle. Um, trust, mm. trust is a heavy thing. Mm. Um, it's one thing that I know that. I've lost in society as well as myself. And Trust. in uh, the horse therapy, mm. you know, it's like those horses seem very in tuned. They are trusting you to kind of be, you know, gentle, to be relaxed near them. You know, it's the, they're they're willing to trust you to be near them. Some of the horses that we work with are also rescue horses. Oh wow! One of the horses that we got to work with the last time, um, her name is Jet. Her past owner was very abusive, and uh, the example of trust is that you know, even though her previous owner was abusive mm -hmm. she's still able to have that trust in humans she's just there mm -hmm. the words that come to my mind are, is home home at last i wonder what, if you would be willing to say those words and just notice what happens home home at last Kind of feels hard to accept. In what way? Kind of feels like my duty's not done yet. Mm. Do you have any sense of what that duty is? I'm not, I've noticed that I always want to help people. Always want to help people. In what way? Kind of really any way I can. Do you see that you're doing that right now? No. I think it's real clear to all of us that what the two of you have been doing here is going to really help people. And I, I believe that that desire is very strong in you. But there's something, some thought process, some feeling that somehow says no, you're not good enough or you're not doing the right thing. I don't know what it is for you. Those are things that go on in my mm. mind. But something that goes on, usually if I ask the person to say a sentence, it's to flush out that devil, that demon. So again, the words are, I'm coming home. I'm coming home. I'm home. I'm home. It's been a long journey. It's been a long journey. And I'm coming home at last. And I'm coming home at last. And I give thanks for life. And I give thanks for life. I honor life. I honor life. And I make a commitment to serve and to help others. And I give the commitment to serve and help others. And again, just notice what happens, sensations, feelings, thoughts. Uh, it kind of feels like I kind of somewhat gave up on myself. This is really, I have, you're not going to like me saying this, this is really wonderful this has come up. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> you can really look at these judgments, what they sound like, what the words are, where they might be coming from. Because I think this could be the next step. So I'm so glad that came up. And if you're in any relationship, of course, there's struggles, mm. right? I mean, relationship in a way is kind of the ultimate challenge, mm. right? So I'm wondering if you think about Melissa, mm. what then you notice in, your, in the feelings in your chest and in the joy and in the quiet. Mm.
Yeah. I feel a lot of joy. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Knowing to always have that support. Yeah. What are some of the things that you learned, if you're willing to, to share, mm-hmm. in how you support him? I've learned to really give him his space and not take it personally. Mm. Um, That's a big one. Yeah. Uh, that's a big one for me, um, and it's also a hard one for me. In what way is it hard for you? Um, well, I would say because of my anger management issues, um, a lot of the times she can get the back end of the stick, uh-huh. and then it's like it can take me anywhere from minutes to get over what happened or a couple of days. And it's like I lock my family out uh-huh. from that time mm-hmm. that I need to just settle down. Yeah. It's just taken a long time to get to this place. and mm. It's been a very hard road. <laughs> I mean, the challenges that you guys have are amazing. The way you're hanging in there and working on yourselves. Mm-hmm. And realizing what's important. Yeah. <laughs> what are you noticing right now, Melissa? It seems like something shifted a little bit. I think I just I feel a sense of relief. Mm. Just hearing Ray express his feelings and um, the support he's receiving and that our family's receiving. Tell me that. And I appreciate you expressing your feelings and um, sharing your experiences. Well, it's nice to hear it. That's one thing I don't do often. Yeah, it's really nice to hear it. I, emotion, I notice, is something I don't show on an everyday basis. But I know you've had some real struggles. Yeah. So I think you guys are really getting on a good track here. I notice that uh, sometimes when she's given me that support that I haven't exactly been accepting of it Um, because, you know, we kind of get into that military Mm -hmm. attitude where it's like I can do it myself. Mm -hmm. You know, I got myself in it. I can get myself out. So it's kind of being in a life of dependency and kind of I've been somewhat against, you know, the support because I feel like I'm trying to take that independence back, yeah. trying to be my own person mm-hmm. instead of being so dependent and putting my burden on someone else. Yeah. And Melissa, just asking mm-hmm. how is with you when you hear that? Um, I don't really feel like it's a burden, first mm-hmm. of all. I'm happy to help you. Um, and I know you're a strong, amazing man. You're an amazing husband and amazing father. And I believe in you. Thank you. I wonder if you guys would just for a moment be willing just to look at each other mm-hmm. and just to share a little bit what you're feeling. Hi, honey. Hello. Hello. How are you? And how about how you? Oh, you got a ball. Joy. Oh, I thought that was too. Love me, honey. Love you. Okay, I'll catch you. You go over there. I'll catch you, okay? Yeah. I keep all his life. Yeah. <laughs>